So, genau. Dann, sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, herzlich willkommen zu unserer Conference. And I guess it's the most my German could do, so sorry on that. Uh, so, well, I'm Jan, 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 I'm Jan,
Uh, this is the matrix of the supported uh, Kubernetes releases. So uh, as you can see, 0 0.5 uh, is, is the Rocky release. So that's what, what, you, get, what you get at the moment is released. Uh, so it supports 1.9 and 1.10, and OpenShift 3.9 and 3.10. And currently on master, we are uh, testing new, newer versions. So Stein release will, will uh, most likely support uh, this, this uh, list that is uh, presented here. So um, we are going to the features. And uh, first of all, we've uh, made the core controller. So this is the part that is talking uh, to the OpenStack API and watching the Kubernetes API and uh, reacts to those uh, Kubernetes uh, events by creating the OpenStack um, resources. Um, so this, this was supposed to we only supported running uh, one instance of uh, Core Controller. At the moment, we've implemented uh, Active Passive HA. Uh, this is a very simple, uh, simple thing. It works exactly as uh, other Kubernetes services uh, do that. Uh, so simply an endpoint, which is res Kubernetes resource, gets created. And the, the instances of the Core Controller are simply annotating annotation there, and that CD is doing the mutual exclusion. Uh, this needs uh, running the sidecar container. This is the definition uh, of it. And we only suppo support that when you're running the uh, core Kubernetes on top of the Kubernetes cluster that, you, that it is networking, uh, it's providing networking to. So simply when you're running uh, core Kubernetes in, in pods uh, on, your, on your infra. Uh, this is basically because we use Kubernetes to, to do this leader election. Um, then, We've added the uh, liveness and readiness checks to the uh, to the core daemon de facto. So this is the list of what, what it uh, checks. Uh, probably the most uh, interesting one in here is the number of CNI at failures. So after a number of uh, um, failed uh, tries to add the network for a container, uh, or add the port for a container, uh, the health check will fail, and the Kubernetes will uh, restart that uh, core, uh, core daemon uh, instance. Uh, that actually helped us uh, with, with one bug that uh, we haven't seen due to health checks being, uh, being enabled. So simply health checks prevented that bug from, uh, um, from showing up in the deployments that we're running with this, uh, with this feature on. Oh, th this is the definitions of the, those are the definitions of the, uh, of those health checks in uh, the, definitions of the um, core daemon daemon set. And another thing is pluggable current controller handlers. So this kind of, this sounds kind of complicated. So I put a very complicated uh, image here. But what you need to know about handlers in the core controller is this is, the, this is the example definition of the handler. So you see that you define what kind of Kubernetes resource it is looking for and on which uh, uh, endpoint on the API you can find it. So what that means is uh, we now have the option to enable or disable some of the handlers. So uh, this is, at first you see that uh, the default ones, so it's uh, vif lb and lbus spec. Uh, this means that Kubernetes is uh, providing networking for uh, pods and the Kubernetes services through the load balancers on Octavia. And if you, for example, use uh, kubeproxy for the services, now you can disable the LB, LB and LBUS spec uh, um, handlers and uh, make sure that uh, Kubernetes will only provide networking for pods. And this is useful uh, conversion table because we, of course, couldn't name the handlers with the, uh, with the names of the resources they are watching. So. That's how it is. Vif is pod, LB is endpoint, LBUS spec is service. And there are two more that uh, you're probably not, not aware of, and uh, they are not listed as the defaults. Uh, so Daniel will explain what those two are about. Yeah, so first of all, uh, I just want to remind or let you know, just in case you don't know how this works, but uh, as of now, in Query Kubernetes, we map Kubernetes services to open cycle balancers, as I was telling before Octavia. So another thing that we are working to now is uh, supporting directly ingress controller. And by ingress controller, I would mean that we will have one controller that would map to, to services and then to pods. And I think one important thing that we would like to 
especially remark is that this implies that we are supporting direct roads and not ingress directly when you get them from the load balancer. So also for using this directly, you want to use this feature, you would need to create by yourself one Octavia Layer 7 load balancer. This is something that we do plan also to enhance over the same cycle by also supporting over load balancer up until Layer 4, but we will speak about that later on. So just to make sure it's, it's understood. Uh, this uh, feature in OpenShift, the roots, and yep. ingress is the is the feature in uh, uh, in, Kuber in vanilla Kubernetes uh, that is kind of exactly equivalent uh, to that. So at the moment we only support uh, roots in OpenShift. We plan to support ingress as well. Just it but it's a matter yet. of time, basically, because of the cycle. So what else? Also, I would like also to highlight this, and this is one important feature that we have been adding supporting Rocky, which is multi-tenancy using namespaces. So up until us now, we were trading uh, all the Kubernetes pods uh, within a single name space. So that would mean that you wouldn't have any kind of multi-tenancy support. But as of now, what we are doing is whenever you create a new project that gets mapped to a name space, and that name space would hook a new router, a new subnet, and would hook out into, the, into everything. Besides that, this feature would fetch all the default. There's a new configuration option which would allow you to define default security groups and security group rules, and they would get applied per name and space. And we define some um, default rules, but for instance, you could get it so every name and space and every project is completely isolated, and that would allow you to have a more secure environment and completely multi tenancy. Well, it's basically the same as I told before. Uh, also, I guess this is funny. We also added uh, support for multi beef multiple interfaces per pod, without using multus or nothing like that. And this, I just want to highlight basically here that uh, this is funny. This was the name of the standard group that was this Kubernetes Network Custom Resource Definition De facto Standard V1 Support, which is quite long. But uh, this is something that uh, we are fully supporting starting career. So you would have just to add this configuration option there when configuring your your um, grid environment, and also we have this CRD, which is what you would need to to do here. I guess that's basically it, and we can later on go more in deep detail if anyone has any specific questions about that. So there's some more. So just just to make this work, you simply need to um, create an instance of that uh, CRD, so this network yeah. attachment definition object in the Kubernetes cluster. It defines the subnet ID of the uh, of the network that it is uh, connected to, right? And then in pod definition, you just uh, specify the additional networks you want to connect to that pod. Um, out, and this is, this is those are additional ones, so you still get the default one, default courier one, and additional uh, interfaces. So in the end, you end up with uh, pod having uh, two neutron ports, ports uh, plugged and having uh, access to multiple networks. Uh, or subnets, or yeah. whatever, whatever you, you think of your to network topologies. <laughs> so, and I guess also I would like to speak a little bit about uh, the future work that we'll be doing on over the train cycle and over the train. By the way, if you want to, then I really love the name. So these are some features that we have been working into that are mainly done, which is uh, the first one is Python 3.6 support. I guess that's uh, a global TC goal for this cycle. So we are already supporting that and all our gates from upstream are fully migrated to Python 3.6. We are welcoming bugs. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So if you find any kind of bugs, please let us know. Also, UDP support for, for the services, upgrade checks, uh, this is our IOP support, and that's something that we have been working on and we'll be having a session tomorrow over the forum with some Samsung guys. Um, but uh, feel free to join us if anyone's interested. I'll be sending an email to the mail list, but I do plan to hold in tomorrow afternoon. Um, besides that, uh, what are in progress too? Well, this is network policy support. For, uh, in case you are not aware of the, what this is, it would be akin to security group rules in OpenStack. So basically, you would have a YAML file uh, defining all your um, firewalling for your pods. And as of now, we, you would have to completely redefine them in OpenStack as well. But as of now, we support, or we plan to do it soon, uh, all the events that will be coming for us, network policies, and those will get mapped 
to security group uh, security group rules, even the default ones, for instance. And again, that's something that we could call overlay if you want. That uh, there are some default allow all and deny all that now we do support too. For instance, if you if we get some events from this uh, allow all network policy, we would just create one security group with that security group rule that would open all TCP port and things like that. Also, we are also working on further uh, DPDK support. Uh, I don't know if there's anyone from Intel here, but uh, anyways. Uh, also, we do plan to have more improvements in the name namespace isolation. Basically, that means that uh, we'll be having these network policies be taking over that feature. So every isolation and every, every security group rule would be directly defined by a specific network policy that would take over the feature there. Uh, the open support too, we, we're currently supporting open on the case too. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's voting, it's working usually. All this uh, dev stuff, their dev stuff plugin is screwed but that's up. A, as, a, as a neutron plugin, right? As a neutron plugin, exactly. We still have some issues with the Octavia uh, OVN provider. We are working on them. Yeah, again, that's Carlos Gonzalez, if you are here, please raise your hand. Okay, he's not here. <laughs> um, and well, and that's something that uh, also maybe you can comment something about the decentralization about the query control. Yeah, so yeah. This is simply to to move some of the operations that is are done by the query controller. So. At the moment, you can see that we can only have either have one core controller or multiple instances, but in active passive. So the idea is to move uh, some of the operations to the core daemon, the ones that we can, uh, to the centralized work and uh, add some availability and scalability to that. Um, I guess, well, well, this is just if you want to contact us or check the documentation and so forth. But uh, I would like to save some minutes, minutes because we are running out of time for questions. So, yeah. So, if, if this was update, mostly about new features, so we would love to to know uh, if there are features that you need from Core Kubernetes, or would like uh, to add, or because yeah. So, so some kind of feedback on that would be very useful for us. Yeah. I have a question. I don't know how mm -hmm. it's related, but I was wondering, uh, can you guys uh, provide Physical bare metal network to pods. Oh, well, so um, it, we can talk about it later. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it later because uh, I mean we should. Yeah. We should. We, we, yeah. we will need to think about it because yeah, yeah, yeah. this is, this is. We we definitely haven't tried that, but, uh, but I don't I don't immediately see any anything that would prevent that. So for, uh, for instance, we should be transferred for to everything that is an ML two plugin. Um, well, yeah, anyways, let, let's speak about this. Session. So, go ahead. Maybe it's related to that question, but um, if you're doing something like um, OpenStack.com on top of Kubernetes, and you're starting off, you have something that is built around what CMO you should start off with, or what that even means, in terms of saying, I've got a bare metal Kubernetes and I install OpenStack on top of it. So, uh, I've actually uh, once prepared a, a OpenStack Helm chart uh, for core Kubernetes. Uh, so simply, uh, how it worked, because well, to start those OpenStack pods, you need some kind of networking for them. So what what I've did is was simply um, making all those uh, those pods uh, on host networking. That means they are not uh, using the CNI, uh, and they are network with the with the host networking. And then uh, what I've got was uh, so that I have that I have had the core uh, core Kubernetes deployment uh, on that uh, on that uh, Kubernetes in pods, and I was able to create pods uh, that were reachable from the OpenStack VMs. But uh, besides that, I don't think there, there's there's a valid use case. It's core is mostly about uh, other way around, so running. Uh, Kubernetes on top of OpenStack VMs uh, we, that gives you, gives you um, well simplifies your deployment and uh, avoids uh, the prevents you from having multiple uh, network overlays. Yeah, so basically, it's that uh, as Michal said, we have like two different kind of usual deployments. One is when you deploy Kubernetes and you deploy OpenStack side by side. You would like to avoid multiple overlay networks, so you would uh, yes. 
have query be a proxy in between, and they, we would just basically attach neutron ports to each pod. And the other use case is when you want actually to have a Kubernetes worker or whatever you would like to call the node inside one OpenStack VM, we would support that as well. What you are speaking sounds like exactly the other way around, but we can discuss this afterward. Yep. How do you map uh, Kubernetes projects, OpenStack projects, when you're doing multi-tenant networks? Using namespaces. Okay. So are they the same in both? Sorry? Are they the same? Like, would the UIDs of namespaces match across the environments? I can show you the, blo the blueprint later if you are interested. Okay. It's, bas it's basically, um, uh, when, when you create, uh, this works, you know, when you create a network, uh, a namespace in the Kubernetes, we create a separate network for, for, the, yeah. for the pods in that, pods in that nas namespace. That's it. So there's some matching between namespaces in the Kubernetes and networks on the, created by Courier Kubernetes okay. in, in, the, in the open stack. In any case, uh, I guess we have a nice diagram, so I'm going to show you. Uh, there, uh, question, sorry. In, uh, how do you open... Uh, Yeah, but that's that's the internal traffic on yeah. the compute uh, on the Kubernetes on the VM, right? Because the so the kubelet is running on the OpenStack VM, so and uh, this kubelet is uh, calling the uh, yeah, pods on. Well, the thing is not that we isolated; it's that it's the same network. So basically, you you have a port, and you don't care whether it's a pod or a VM. It would be yep, a so, network. So the kubelet is not reaching the pods uh, through the through the container network. It's probably I think it's it's not even going out of the kernel. So it's just uh, going to the to the network's <laughs> namespace. Yeah, that that's for health checks. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that, so it should be like that. So maybe one, one more question, and I guess we are running out of time. Maybe one, one, one more. Uh, yeah. yeah, go on. Is it Sorry. possible for the containers to connect to VMs and virtual instances if you're running an open stack? Can you Sorry? integrate containers and VMs and virtual the same network? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, there, there is one feature that we haven't told, uh, told you about, because uh, I don't think we have uh, it running, running in any gate. But... Uh, you can have something like uh, multi vif pool. That's how we how we how we call it. Simply, you can define for some of the uh, Kubernetes um, Kubernetes nodes uh, different uh, different courier vif drivers, which means that uh, uh, you can have mixed environments. Some of the Kubernetes uh, workers will be on VMs, and some of workers will be on bare metal. And the difference will be that those on VMs will be networked to the network Neutron subports, and those on the bare metal will have the uh, the Neutron ports created and connected. You obviously need to run a Neutron agent on those uh, on those yeah. bare metal uh, Kubernetes nodes, but yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it should be possible. Just to map it to yeah, maybe a more, a more known thing is when again you want to have several different ML2 plugins. Um, okay, then thanks all for coming, attending the summit. And if you have any question, we'll be around here for you. So thanks all, guys. <laughs>